Hi, my name is Jim Kerbari with Cisco, Cisco IT. I've been with Cisco uh, 10 years, and prior to that, I was with EDS and Pro Systems. Most of my career managing, uh, doing design, build, and operative data centers. Um, currently, my team manages a worldwide portfolio, over 24 data centers, thousands of racks. We use DCIM tools and Lite specifically to, to manage the physical power, space, and cooling of that environment. But we're just beginning. Our real focus is to create the enterprise services platform where we can integrate Enlight, ServiceNow, and other key tools so that we can create this digitized, simplified environment. And that's really the focus of, of where we're going with this uh, Great. set of technologies. Well, uh, for us, it's uh, pretty simple. Obviously, spreadsheets aren't scalable and they're not digital. So our, our CIO, we have a specific uh, strategy around digitization, simplification, extending to the cloud, and using analytics then in that environment to make better business decisions. You know, a very agile environment. And really for us, we used Enlight and our DCIM tools to make some very strategic decisions. We actually deferred a build of a data center for about $20 million by using the analytics out of these tools. And we also have saved about 7% of our operating cost with consolidation of other platforms as well within that portfolio. So right. it's been pretty significant for us. Did you have to do some ROI justification, I assume, to justify the project, or? No, not really. I mean, the, the, the main reason we started with DCIM was to get the physical inventory in place so we could understand our physical footprint, the energy we were spending. Once we understood that, then we could see the data in a different way that allows, allows us to really change our portfolio. Yeah, we, well, we did the same thing at Cisco. We, we started off with some in-house tools. We, we even tried to develop our own internal tool, and we realized it couldn't scale. So then we went off on an analysis to really do a COTS analysis of what was available on the market. We looked at the magic quadrant. We went through all of the suppliers in the magic quadrant, and we, we eventually selected Enlight because of its scalability and usability. So Great. that was the key for us. Yeah, for, for us at Cisco, we, we were trying to first establish a good critical inventory that we could then build upon. And that critical inventory was key for us because that al allowed us to see using data analytics, the, the portfolio in a different way. So for us, it was really about seeing the data differently, whether it was at the RU level, was it, whether it was at the, the domain level, compute storage network, but we could see it differently once it was in the tool and we could report on it differently than we ever had before. Besides facilities. I can't answer that, everyone. <laughs> Everybody, well, it's good. So for us, the initial customer, if you will, the initial stakeholder was our, our service owners in the data center compute storage network, the traditional ones. But then we also had the, the finance team that wanted to, to see the same data, not only just the assets or the location of those assets, but the, the net book value, the, the depreciation of those assets as well. So are they looking at warranties? Are they looking at service contracts? Or? Yeah, so for us, we've integrated ServiceNow and Enlight together. So what we're really trying to build is an end-to-end -end life cycle not just what's in housed in the data center, but how new equipment gets ordered through our e-store, how it then gets sent through our product catalogs into uh, DCIM, into Enlight, and then Enlight replicates that location data to ServiceNow, and we put all of those analytics up on a dashboard for service owners, for financial managers to see, and it's highly valuable. For, for us, it, it's it, cost always comes into every discussion we have, but for us, it's really about agility and speed. So if there is an application owner that wants to drive a new application to the cloud, we do have internal process for what are the right security guardrails, how do they do it, you know, et cetera. But uh, the cost issue really is involved in every optimization discussion we have because Data centers are a large investment. We want to make sure we maximize those investments. Sure. And that's the focus of what we try to do every day is maximize the footprint, maximize the energy spend, because that's within our control. Okay. 
with your solution? Why don't uh, automate workflow, it? automate workflow, automate workflow. Okay. <laughs> it's all about programmatic, programmatic infrastructure, di digitization for us. And, it, you know, really we're, we're trying to take it a step at a time. So our MVP may only have the physical inventory, the space, the power, but then the next thing we, we go to our service owners and we say, what do you want next? And we try to do it in a, in a real safe, agile approach. Okay. Just one, you know, one final thing on uh, the future for Cisco. We're trying to take what we build in the data centers, this, this platform, this enterprise service platform of Enlight and ServiceNow, and we've integrated with other tools as well for analytics, for event management, et cetera. And then we want to roll that out to our field sales offices. So you want to enable the same capabilities that we have in the data center in remote offices, campuses, branch locations, so that we can have a full inventory of all of our assets worldwide. Yeah, I would just say that I would just reemphasize that uh, the standardization is key. We found that we had the same problem. Data normalization wasn't there. We had to normalize our data, especially for supplier and, and models and those kind of things. So I think that's a key first step is to get that data set, start looking at it and normalizing it. And uh, there are bulk upload capabilities in Enlight, so you can, you can upload a data set pretty quickly, get it imported into the tool. So that's a good feature. Well, for us, there's probably a couple. Um, the first one is, and I'm probably repeating myself, but data analytics. W we discovered things about our data centers that we didn't know. You know, percent number of RUs that were utilized and not utilized, how power was being distributed and consumed. All those key elements gave us the ability to see things differently in our data centers. The other thing I think that, that we learned was that there is a key integration of these platforms that's going to continue. So data enrichment it is important. As you take that first step, that first MVP, maybe um, you won't have all of the completeness in your records or in your database, but you have to take a step at a time. I don't think that there is any silver bullet or uh, you have to do the hard work as well importing the data, scrubbing the data, making sure that the data is valid, because if the data is no good, your consumers won't, won't use it. So you have to make sure that while you're building this system, importing the data, that the data accuracy is, is at a high level. James? For, yeah, for, for Cisco IT, we have connected the workflow from ordering through the installation. So when a piece of equipment gets ordered, it gets, once it shows up on the dock, it gets scanned with an RFID scan. That scan goes into the asset database, and then the, uh, the asset sits in storage. There's a reservation that's automated for the data center, and when the, the layer one resource goes to install that piece of gear, they know that it goes in that rack, they scan it again, and, then, and now it's implemented. And, and of course, there's change management tickets and configuration management updated as a part of that. And, and, and as, a, as a regular practice, all of our data centers, we scan all of the assets on a quarterly basis just to keep the inventory accurate. Okay. So um, there's, there's several ways we maintain stock rooms. And, and again, stock rooms are, are um, uh, equipment that haven't been deployed, so they're not discoverable by ServiceNow. So therefore, what we've done is we've, we scan all those assets at going into the stock room. We integrate that data into the ServiceNow dashboard, so you can see not only what's installed in the data center floor, but you can see what's in stock. So the, 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 the future stock is visible in, uh, in an asset dashboard. So it's, it is automated. Um, we, have a, we have a small operations team that, that uh, uses... Cisco does something small. That's good to hear. Yeah, no, well, nothing in Cisco is real small, but... <laughs> At least in my mind, it's small. It's a couple hundred folks worldwide, uh, and uh, but they're they're not full time dedicated. We've trained them on the tool. They use the tool to do installations, decommissions. It, uh, they follow the process, the procedures for inventory, um, and really, the the stockroom management is really the return on investment is about. Uh, level of stock, the amount of the amount of net book value in stock, and the days in service. So we'll, we track those two metrics to make sure that equipment is not being depreciated in a room somewhere. It's being depreciated on the data center floor in service.
product. I do have a team that does capacity planning and management in addition to some of the uh, things that they do with this tool. Uh, so there's about, there's about eight or 10 that, that are in capacity planning okay. for the data centers.